Hello and welcome to Beyond the Scale, Weight Loss and Wellness. I'm your host, Coach Monica. I'm joined today by Coach Darcy, and we are here to guide you through the ins and outs of a lifestyle that's transformed not just our lives, but the lives of countless women navigating the waves of perimenopause and menopause. Whether you're here to shed weight, understand your body better, or simply find a community that gets it, you're in the right place. So sit back and enjoy the next few minutes as we tackle the hot issues of today. Welcome, Coach Darcy. How are you doing today? You know, I'm doing great. I'm feeling refreshed. Uh, got my hairs did. Yeah, you <laughs> Feel look new. Nice. Our audience and can't think, see you, but no, you, you look lovely this morning. <laughs> I'm trying to find like the easy go-to way of waking up in the morning and w- looking the way I want to. So... We're working on it. I, yeah. I got myself a little beach wave curl thing that's going on, but um, yeah. and and summer is for school for us. School is is in session. Probably by the time people listen to this, pe- my kids will yeah. be in school. So there might be some very last sounds of children. <laughs> Not <laughs> last time of recording until, <laughs> until summer. In reality, comes back. you were. In, uh, when this airs, you are like living the high life because the boys are back in school. They're back in school. When we're recording. I might be, I might be drowsy because I'm having to wake up at six o'clock oh. in the morning again. I don't but miss those days. No, I don't no. miss them. No, no. but how, how are you doing there, boss? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I recovered. You were on vacation last week, so I held the fort down mm-hmm. uh, with our clients. They all did amazing they and did. they, um, they did. They did wonderful. Hey, did you like the trick that uh, one of my clients and I played Listen, on you this Linda, week? Listen, that <laughs> was that made me feel like, well, why am I tattling? It was <laughs> so like funny. Tat- She's like, um, she sent me a message back. <laughs> oh, did she? Did she? <laughs> and I said, well, you're. I said, well, you are a turd. That's what I said. <laughs> so for our audience members, no. you are you are our macro coach. So yes, I what am. you do. With our clients is every day you look into their lives and you're looking at what they eat and, and how they so, feel and how they feel if they're going yeah. to the bathroom, like, you right. know, all of the things I know it all. You could tell me a picture and, and your job is to inform me, their coach, you know, when you look at my clients, it, it's your job is to inform me of their progress. And if yes. there's trouble and in uh, town, I go after them. And, and that's part of our coaching agreement. Well, it was a, uh, we, we just wondered if you were, if you were back from vacation and, and you were back in the groove. So <laughs> my client and I uh, cohorted you together. Schemed. We you schemed schemers. together and suddenly, <laughs> uh, what was it? A Boston cream donut yes, that, that like ended up in her thing. food. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she did take it out. Oh, Yes. Because she didn't want that in her records. She did not want it. She better in her keep that in her records for for scheming. Sounds like a government plan, you know. <laughs> no. Take it out. <laughs> I felt like I I do tattle on on certain mm-hmm. clients when I see things, and mm-hmm. I have an eye that can most likely I will see it. Uh-huh. Um, and if I don't ever respond on it, then it's like, is was this a fluke or like? But this uh-huh. one was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. What is going was. on? She so she that was, was very not uncomfortable nice. being a part of that scheme. She was very she's like, Are you sure, coach? Are you sure I should do that? And I said, Yes, let's do it. Oh my goodness. And you passed the test. You passed mm-hmm, the test with mm-hmm. flying colors. I don't know exactly how I would have responded um to that client. I, my response was great. It was. Did How's you your read tummy it? feeling? How's your tummy yeah. feeling after that donut? I said, yeah. remember your 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 end goal wise. That's right. It was very it's professional. Like I would hire I you. I would oh, totally thanks. hire you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to be like, first of all, like first reaction, like bash him. Like, yeah. what the heck were you thinking? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, sometimes I think that. Sometimes I think that, like, but I don't say it. I try to be but, kind. The, uh, another <laughs> one that comes in my mind a, a lot of time, it's, uh, a lot of times is, How's it working for you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. How's that? How's how are you How's doing? It working for you? Not very good, coach. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's gonna be a fun show today. So last yes. week, I know the lineup of these shows, and last uh, week we had an amazing special guest. Um, you weren't a part of that recording. No, I'm very sad and jealous. It was, 
it was All of pretty it. fun. Dr. Vera Wang, Vera, Vera Tarmish. <laughs> Vera Wang, is she, she makes purses, right? She makes clothing, yes. Clothing, yes. No, doctor. we didn't have her. I didn't know she was a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> we had Dr. Vera Tarman on last week. If you missed that show, go back once one session over. Um, it was a really, really fun show. And she got to come on a politically incorrect podcast because she's so kind and so nice. She lives in Canada, you know, and those Canadians, those, those, those they're guys kind. are all nice to each they're other. Very nice. They don't, they're politically correct. A, a lot of well, them. I even on the streets. I went to, uh, I went to, I went to Canada and they were very kind. I loved it. I loved the culture. Never I loved been the there. People. Yeah, you should Never go. Been there. They're very kind. They wouldn't let me. They would not let me over. <laughs> I like would. <laughs> That's why I like today's show because today's show all there there's nothing that's 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 off the table for us and we're right? going to get on soapboxes. So I just have the I whole just, time. We're I, just I, getting it out. We're not even going to put it away. No. No, I when I got my microphone out, I just stepped up on the on the soapbox because mm -hmm. I'm like, we don't have to get down today because it's all no, it's all bars are taken down today. We can talk what, about whatever we want to talk about. Yes. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're gonna talk about things that get on our nerves. Yes, a lot of things, not our yes. kids. No, um, I mean no. we could do that too. We could totally do that too, but. We're going to talk about the things that get on our nerves and um, the things that we want to see changed in the health world. Mm -hmm. um, we have a front seat to health. Um, we have a different kind of front seat. So there's, you know, the doctors are on the front lines. You know, they see they see patients one on one. We get a different perspective because we get to mop up what the healthcare industry has done mm -hmm. to our clients. And um, and we've learned a lot through that. We've learned a lot. Um, I have learned um, that I don't trust the I don't trust the medical <laughs> field. <laughs> I'm not putting my full trust in them and anymore. Here's where my fingers up. We I have a that. we have to do a disclaimer mm -hmm. because, and I'm gonna say we have opinions, we have thoughts, we mm -hmm. have experiences. We hear yeah. people with experiences, and so we have formed these um, these thoughts around what we have experienced mm -hmm. and seen ourselves. We're not um, doctors. We're not doctors. Mm -mm. And we don't claim to be one by golly. This is not what nope. I want to be. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, but there are very um, amazing people out there mm -hmm. that have been in the doctor world mm -hmm. and have um, transformed their minds and have had an awakening. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what we we talk about is you know, supporting those doctors yeah. and medical people um, that are seeing that they've been manipulated. Yeah. And asking more to step out yes. into the light because we yes. got your back. Absolutely. So this is the disclaimer is we may be bashing the medical world, but we're not bashing those that have mm -hmm. had their eyes awoken. And, and for everything we say, there's an exception to the rule yes. for everything yes. we say, for every opinion we have, there's another side to the, to the coin. And we get that. And we have the microphone. So we get to tell you what our opinion is. Mm -hmm. Now we would love for you to write to us and tell us your opinion. If you're nice, if you're really nice, um, especially if you're from Canada, because you're really nice over there. Yes. <laughs> so, but these are just our opinions yes. and, and opinions um, are made to be wrong. And yes. so we have just seen a, I, have you heard this saying causation is not correlation or correlation is not causation. Sometimes, um, sometimes things group together, you know, as, Hey, this is happening around, you know, this sickness, or this is happening around this weight loss program. And sometimes we just have our experience to say, Hey, you know what? Six out, of t six out of ten of our clients have experienced this. I mean, monk fruit, for example. Um, you know, monk fruit is great. That's a great, mm -hmm. great sweetener. There's a lot of people, but in our practice, we have seen monk fruit stall a lot of clients. So when right. we say monk fruit stalls, we don't mean that for everybody. We just mean that we see a lot of trends in that yeah. direction. There's you a know? big percentage. Big percentage, yeah. yeah, and it's something we got to take into consideration. So, yeah. so today we're just going to talk about things that get on our nerves and uh, politics and and keto. Polit what did I what did I entitle this one? Um, 
I forget what it, it's got a really cool title. I thought it was things that get on our nerves. Things that get on our nerves. It's not. Can I, can I start one? I know we didn't talk about this one. Yeah. But this one's fresh and it's because it's been getting on my nerves. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's been the, these, these coaches out here that claim to be health coaches that are just angry and they are spewing out um, this, this angry tone of voice towards Mm -hmm. people that, you know, initially are very like-minded when we were focusing on whole foods and just stepping away from the the world the united states i'm going to pick pick on the united states the western diet mm-hmm. and the oils and the things the way we create things and this will roll into what we're going to talk about yeah definitely other things but they think that because we have these um studies that are coming out and because we are avoiding certain toxins in our life that we are fear mongering mm-hmm. being fear mongers mm-hmm. fear mongers yeah. <laughs> and so when we are when we are talking about these things we are not trying to put fear into your life we are trying mm-hmm. to um focus on awareness and stepping outside of your little comfort bub- bubble thinking that america's feeding us great things we want you to be aware that Mm-hmm. It, they're not right. <laughs> period. Right. Yeah. And then by what we're going to be talking about the rest of this time is, you know, we, um, we're just wanting you to have think for some yourself. of the speak for your think for yourself, mm-hmm. speak for yourself, and you know, do something about it if you yeah. feel the 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 um, purpose of yeah. doing something about Empower it. Empower yourself. Empowerment. That's that's. That's the big key of yes. today is making sure you're empowered and knowing the truth about things. I know I know the story you were talking about and and coach is talking about a podcast she heard um this last week and and this girl was just raking um a, a specific holistic doctor through the coals and basically just saying, you know, everything that this woman has studied so hard for and lived, the woman had cancer and survived cancer. She was just rattling off. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Had nothing to back it up. And she was just very, very angry. And so we want to just encourage you to empower yourself. There's a lot of yelling. There's a lot of noise out there. And so basically what we want you to do is we want you to think for yourself. And if we can give you ideas, And, you know, if we can just trigger something for you, when we say the word maltodextrin today, we want you to trigger your brain to say, you know what, they said that word, I'm going to go research it for myself. Same with our preacher, you know, Mm -hmm. our preacher every Sunday says, don't trust me. You take everything I say against what God's word says, you know? So we want you to do that to yourself. Um, and, and, and. In our world, we call it biohacking. We call, mm-hmm. you know, testing things out. There's some things that fail. There's some things that, you know, um, that we've tried in our own lifestyle and they failed. So we're like, oh, we're going to chalk that one up to, you know, my own body saying, nope, that's not going to happen. So I want to start with politics because that's my favorite topic. It <laughs> makes me angry and it gives me wrinkles. And so I decided that I don't, I don't like politics anymore, especially if you are in America right now, in this day and age, Woo. Just bury yourself under a, a log for a neck for the next 90 days. And then yeah. in a hundred days, we are going to come out of the hole and we're going to be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we, we love don't each know each other again. <laughs> we love each other, but we're not sure. We're not sure of the outcome. And we're not sure. <laughs> We're, we're we're nervous. <laughs> we might not. We might stay in our hole for a while. I you don't know. know. I, I asked Dr. Terman that. I think I asked it. I think I asked her on the podcast. I can't remember if it was a private conversation, but I'm like, <laughs> do you have politics in Canada like we do here? Like, do you are you guys throwing things at each other? And she said, no, we all like each other. There's some people who don't like our. I think they have a president, right? Yes. Um, yes. But but no, we don't throw with things at each other over here. So right. But. Let's start with politics. Okay. Um, So I took a trip um, to go see my congressman. Um, Some of you know I was a former lobbyist, and that was what I did, and that's why I was so sick and so ill. Um, And so I know how to take a politician out by his knees. And now I didn't take a trip to D.C. I I took a nice trip to D.C. this time to to talk to my congressman because he was brand new. And my goal of that trip was to educate him because – there is a misconception out there, and, and for all of our listeners um, who who get annoyed at health things or or maybe we strike a chord with you, 
let me give you some background on a politician. Um, he doesn't know everything you know. So mine, my particular congressman, I think he owned a, a company that made plastics. Well, he has no idea the health side of things. And I think there's a mis, um, a misrepresentation that all politicians should know everything about every topic because they're paid the big bucks and mm -hmm. because they're in, in charge of the law. When in fact, that is not the case. Our job as citizens of, you know, of an amazing country, and I think probably Canada has the same, maybe, I mean, I, I don't know what their structure is over there, but to me, a politician over in Canada also doesn't know everything. And so it's our job as citizens, as healthy, productive citizens to educate our politicritter. That's what I like to call them. Politicritter. Say politi that again. Politicritter. I like that. <laughs> Uh, because my poor Rudy, he doesn't know anything about maltodextrin. He knows mm. nothing about that, nor would, nor should he be expected to. He doesn't know everything about the health care. He doesn't know everything about insurance, about crops. He doesn't know all of the things. So it's my job, whether you call it a lobbyist, whether you call yourself an activist, whether you call yourself a healthy citizen, it is our job to educate our Congress to educate our state representatives, to educate our senators, because they don't know. And the cool thing is, is we have the forum and we have the setup to be able to do that. Most of us are out here just screaming at them mm -hmm. and not educating them. So I took my fancy little backside and I got on a plane about, I think it was about two, two years ago, I got on a plane and I went to see congressmen. Because I wanted to educate him on a particular area of our health world, and that is about maltodextrin. So I literally took a trip across the across the United States to go talk to him about one ingredient. Now, there is no, I, I don't, well, there might be a left and right side of health. I bet there is. Um, it's so, it's so mixed up. I never know what side. And I like to be on a side. I yeah. love to be on a side, but I really don't know if we're on a particular side. We're on the side of individual liberty and, mm -hmm. um, and natural health. Give these doctors the freedom to do what they need to do. Get the government out of the way. Yeah. That's, that's the, if there is a political side, that's where I stand. So my job was to go educate Congressman Rudy about maltodextrin. Why maltodextrin? Because in our country, maltodextrin is a substance that they put in all of our food because it's cheap, made from corn, um, very, very cheap to make. It's a filler and it is in every single ingredient that you look at because it's cheap to make. Well, the problem is for our diabetic clients and for our obese clients and for our, our clients who have PCOS, the problem is maltodextrin has a higher glycemic index than table sugar. You might as, it's like 135 to 65. It's insane. That is and insane. Because politicritters are involved in this and the lobbying world, K Street, they are allowed to say, this item is sugar-free and they don't have to disclose that this is in our food. One of our favorite companies, and I'm not ready to out them yet, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, but one of our favorite companies, we just found out make their products with maltodextrin. It's not on their packaging. And to me, that is wrong because it impacts my sugar. It impacts my glycemic index. It impacts my uh, my my diabetes, my pre-diabetes. It impacts my weight loss. It impacts everything. And I believe now. I here's a political side of me. Um, I'm not for banning anything. I'm I'm for freedom because that's where our country was founded on on freedom. If I'm not hurting somebody else, uh, somebody else is not hurting me. We have liberties in this country. Okay. Speaking on behalf of the United States, I don't know about the other ones. Um, and so I'm not about ba banning things. I don't like that. Maltodextrin is banned in 11 countries, not about banning anything. This one I'm on the fence on. I'm on the fence on the banning of this one though. I, I could be talked into it, but my, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be point. sad if it were banned. I would, <laughs> right. You would not, I would, not, would not be not sad. Be... No, no, no. But right. my, my freedom loving blood runs so free. I'm like, freedom, is it hurting 
which we could argue it is hurting people. So we could argue for for the banning of it. And it's banned in 11 countries. That's why France and, you know, that's why when you go over there, you can eat their pastries because they don't poison their food. Right. My point when going to see Congressman Rudy was not to ban it, but to put disclaimers, to put disclosure. And that's what I feel that this company and probably the time will come where we have to expose the company. Not there yet, but put it on the label. There's maltodextrin so that I can choose and I probably would choose maybe this product. I don't know unless I found some without it. Um, So I can choose. I can make an educated decision and choose. So I want these things disclosed on the label. I want truth and labeling. If there's sugar in the product, I want it on the on the label so that I can make that choice. That's the first thing that I'm upset right. about today. Well, I would say years ago when you thought I was a kook mm-hmm. uh, about the gen- genetically modified, I was on that bandwagon when I was doing all the homesteading stuff before before keto, before mm-hmm. all that, and thinking I was eating healthy. Um, you know, with the pesticides and all the things that they're they're doing with these plants and these crops. You know, I mm-hmm. um. You know, we band together. There was even a page that I was on part of that we were putting together just to label that it was mm-hmm. genetically modified. Like mm-hmm. that was the that was the bandwagon that I was on. And yeah, eventually, because people made it aware, awareness to these politicians, that is why you see on those cans, on mm-hmm. anything that it, it that it has, um, is is either genetically modified or not. Like yeah. it will it has to be labeled that it is genetically modified or g- GMO free. Like you, yeah. that's what you want. So now that you're able to know that, like why can't we do that with all of the ingredients as well as those ingredients that you can't pronounce? Let's, let's do a factual like, okay, this is, this is not carrageenan. This is actually uh, glue <laughs> or this is made from um, an oil that is actually used in our cars. Um, mm-hmm. Things like, like let's let's be real and stop putting these um I'm qu- air quoting scientific words that nobody yeah. can pronounce right on the back of the labels. That's yeah. not, I mean that's another that's one of my my gets on my nerves is mm-hmm. the fact that we are reading these ingredients that somebody had to be very creative with the alphabet to make something sound like it was healthy yeah or it was okay for our bodies. You mm-hmm. know it's just that. When you band together like we did back in the day and got something mm-hmm. um, where it was passed that we it has to be labeled, then right. we need to do that with all of these ingredients that are are negative. Right, and they may they may disagree and say, "Oh, maltodextrin is not a, a negative ingredient. How can you say mm-hmm. that this is affecting our bodies?" But I mean, we have we have an obesity problem. Mm-hmm. We have an addiction problem to food. Yeah. Um, you know, we Think have. About- Think about when the obesity problem started and what right. was happening with the labels at that time. Right. There there, there were no labels, Mm-mm. right? And it was, you know, let's go low fat. <laughs> that was yeah. like the low, that's when it really started and yeah. started to flare up was when they said that fat was bad, mm-hmm. which lures us back into our next point, right? Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Wait. We don't even have to hop down off of the sto- soapbox. No, we not. can just slide over. <laughs> no, we we just scoot on over to our next that point. That is bad. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it's real because our clients come to us and and sometimes they're like panicked when they get the blood tests and their doctor scares the living crap out of them because yeah. their cholesterol is 200 and their cholesterol is high. So we got to put you on a statin. So here we <sighs> go with... With the whole, let me just say, I need to put a bow on the last conversation. Okay. Your job to fix this problem, your job is to educate your congressperson, your state representative, your your legislator. Band together. Yes, together very politely because remember, they do not know what you know. If you have a good legislator, he or she, and including a doctor, if you have a good doctor, legislator, lawmaker, governor, he or she will sit down with you and say, tell me about this. Educate me on this, right? And you will have a chance to sit down and have a conversation. And that's what I did with Rudy. I had a conversation. I explained to him what maltodextrin was. I explained to him 
uh, why I needed this, you know, this truth and labeling. Um, and he and I also right now are working on uh, making sure that full disclosure, that lab grown meat mm-hmm. is labeled. Yes. I oh personally goodness. wouldn't mind if that was banned as well. However, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If banning something is very difficult. It is. It is. I want to know if this cow that I'm eating had a name at a farm <laughs> or whether it came from a machine in a factory. You know, we, we deserve w- to know. We think that these this homesteading trend that is happening right now with these young these youngins out there um, is just because prices in the now this mm-hmm. is not wrong but the mm-hmm. prices in the grocery stores are high but right. thinking about this is that the feed that they are giving their animals is also high so mm-hmm. there's a reason for this like mm-hmm. they are being awoken by the fact mm-hmm. that their food it does not taste like it used to because it w- it is. It is full of mm-hmm. just nastiness. I, and there was there was one day, um, this is a side note. One day, I was consuming a non organic chicken breast that I got from a big store that is has things in bulk. I won't mention mm-hmm. any names. And I was I grilled it, and I cooked the dickens out of that thing. And mm-hmm. when I took a bite into it, not only before I put it on the grill was it PC and and like looked stringy but it tasted like i was biting into um i don't know like rubber mm-hmm. and i'm like okay yeah. is this because it was lab created or was it how this like i so i researched like i was wondering why was my chicken like this mm-hmm. and the goes to it kind of went into like the thing that they're feeding the chicken is is number one and how they finish Mm -hmm. but then also how it ends its life yeah that's the other thing when it is in stress like the meat does things like i've even um had some chicken wings that i ate that Mm -hmm. and this makes you not want to eat meat but if you have a homegrown garden and farm then it's a little bit better um but it's just like there was an already broken bone Mm -hmm. like i didn't break this bone but when i bit into it the bone was already broken so it makes you wonder how this animal you know gave its life yeah (laughs) the negative thing it's it's a thing that you can go down in a spiral but these are what this is why we're very passionate about how our food is created how it's being treated um, and I, I side, I could probably side with those animal rights people when it comes to um, how animals are being treated. And that's why most of them are vegetarian or vegan. But I like my meat too much and my protein that, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like an animal should give its life in a better way. You know, it's just anyway, yeah. that was a that was a random thought. But it makes sense why there are a lot more people and families being um, little homesteaders now. Yeah, because people are educating themselves first. Yes. So take that a step further and educate your lawmaker because your voice really, really does make a difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was a lobbyist, we we had, um, I won't talk about the topic that we were fighting for, but we changed the lawmaker's vote by one vote. And, and and our topic of the day switched to our side with one vote. Wow. And so your and, and, and it was a group of six moms who came in there and educated that committee about this particular topic. Six moms changed the minds of an entire committee. So your voice does make a difference. Be respectful, be kind, and be and and know your stuff. Do not go in there and give a conspiracy theory. You know, have your proof backed up on paper, have your story straight. Don't go in there with your tinfoil hat on. You know, I I have a whole collection of them in my closet of every color, but I don't wear it when I go talk to my lawmaker. Right. 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 Half of them have come true. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but that brings us over the next topic of, of medical records and and your health and the mainstream physicians world controlled by the drug companies and controlled by lobbyists um cholesterol the idea of low fat bringing on 
things like the high cholesterol and they and the the drugs that they use, the statins that they use that ultimately cause Alzheimer's and the fear mongering that these physicians give to their patients needlessly. Um, the people are terrified when they get their labs back mm -hmm. because their cholesterol is high and they just assume that the doctor, you know, is telling them the truth, which the doctor may think he is or she is, but statins mm. are doing so much harm. Right. What we tell our, our clients, and we are not doctors, we don't play them on the internet, but what we say is when you have a doctor that says, you got to go on statins, what I say is, ask the doctor, can I have six months to fix this with my nutrition? Never have I had a doctor say no. And we, we can reverse these things within that mm -hmm. six months. Nine times out of 10, we reverse the things that they wanted to put you on statins for. Statins are so so dangerous. Um, and so research, research and know what these numbers mean. Just a few years ago, the, the concerning number for cholesterol was 300. They've moved that thing down to like 190. Why do you think they've moved it down? The big because gap. we can give more drugs out yeah. that way. Oh, yep. that, that would be a tinfoil hat probably oh. theory there right? <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, you, you know, it's have their own, their own standalone so soapbox. Right. Well, here's the thing though. Like when, when they get put on those high cholesterol medications, there's going to be a spiral effect that happens. Mm -hmm. It's a domino effect. Like when one falls, there's another thing that falls. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have to have a different, ne another medication to to cope with that one. And then, you know, it keeps going. So when's, mm -hmm. when's the stop? Right. When's the stop sign? And this one makes me mad because this one, it does make me angry because when, when it's usually a certain for men, exact for example like mm -hmm. for men they usually are the ones that have that medication that they have to take mm -hmm. when they take that medication that affects their testosterone levels mm -hmm. if their testosterone level is low that means that oh now i'm gonna have to get them on that blue pill because they're still young enough that they probably mm -hmm. want to do things yeah and they need it to work so then they put them on that mm -hmm. um so Dominoes. it's just it's a domino and it makes me angry because mm -hmm there that it shouldn't happen that way no um and if it's preventable but here's here's my other thought when you were saying all that you know when our clients go get their their medical um blood drawn and all that stuff i i almost guarantee that a client's going to come back to me and say oh my doctor said my ldl is too high mm -hmm. and yep. so when that happens I'm like, I'm not surprised. Mm -mm. And in fact, I'm like, okay, well, that's when we tell them to go back to their doctor and say, okay, mm -hmm. what kind of LDL am what I looking kind? at? Yes. Because it's not just one, but they like to categorize the LDL mm -hmm. into one clump. Mm -hmm. Now, to clarify, I'm sure a lot of our listeners know that HDL is the good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And then the LDL is is known to be the bad cholesterol. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. when the, when that, that is the, is that the number, do you know if that's the number that they, they, they go by or is it like a total? For it's the, a formula. You know, they a, divide okay. it like the, oh gosh, you would ask me that, but they, yeah, they divide <laughs> right. that formula uh, up and it also has to do with the, the size of the particles as yes. well. There's um, an a, is it a, B and C. Yeah. Yeah, is yeah, it right? a small particle? We don't want yeah. the small ones. We don't want those. One. We want the big ones. So that number is so generic when you get it on yeah. your lipid panel that you cannot take it for what it is. You've got to dig down. Again, it's about educating yourself and it's about uh, reading the right kind of material so that you know exactly what tests to order. Uh, thyroid is another one. The mm. thyroid is people go by the TS TSH number and no, that 
that number really doesn't have anything to do with anything. You want to know how much free T3. You want to know what the conversion rate. You want to know the the um. You want to know how it is metabolized. You want to know all of these other things. And so, um, one of my favorite books um that that has helped me with my clients is the one from Dr. Barry and Kim Howerton mm -hmm. on lab results. Yeah. You really want to know. You want to dig deeper and and advocate for yourself when it comes to these numbers because. They don't mean what your doctor's office tells you they mean. Yeah. There's fact, a lot bigger story to tell in those lipid panels. In fact, the, you know, with cholesterol, we learned over the years is that it's great for your brain. Like mm -hmm. you need cholesterol for your brain. Yeah. And it's like they're trying to dumb us down and make us have foggy minds and mm -hmm. not being able to think clearly. And it's just like that we end up being sheep. Because yeah. That what was is my that woman's name, um, Barbara. Barbara O'Neill. O'Neill. I was so listening nice. to one of her her podcasts yeah. or her videos today, and she said, you know, people with high cholesterol don't have Alzheimer's. What? That is crazy. Because and the, that's climbing. The brain, yeah. The brain needs fat. Right. And so they're blaming it on fat, and it's actually glucose that's causing the damage. It's the yeah. glucose. It's the insulin that's causing the dam damage. It's not the fat. Right. What did she say? Um uh, it's not the butter. It's not the butter's fault. But it, it's that w of it's what the, bread's, the bread's, bread's. Yeah. Yeah. Bread's doing. And yeah. that's the thing. Like they, you know, we have a lot of, we, uh, the, it's increasing the type three diabetes, which mm -hmm. is dementia and Alzheimer's, all that type three is because Caused of that. Statins. Yeah, yeah. Just because of that. Right. And that can be prevented. Yeah. But it is scary to take your, he your health into your own hands because we have been so brainwashed and so comforted by the fact that our physicians are the end all be all that they have all of the answers that they are. They are so smart and, and we, we have put our health in their hands and we've walked away. Right. It's time we take our own health back into our hands. Now that is not telling the doctor you're fired. It's not telling the doctor. I mean, you may have to, there's a right. specific way you do that by the yes. way, otherwise you lose all health care. So it, it's not that it is. It's having conversations with your doctor and it's knowing when to walk away. Yes. Um, because there may be a time that you have to walk away. Um, you do it in a certain way. You do it in a way that is not confrontational, but it starts with learning and educating yes. yourself, you know, knowing do the right questions. Yeah. Do tests on yourself. We darts, when we did our, um, our carnivore experiment, mm -hmm. um, I, I did it around my blood panel. So I had, I did carnivore and then I had my blood work taken and, and you know, I was able to compare before and after that's what it's going to take. And you can do that. You don't need your doctor to prescribe all of these tests. You can go to lab corp. You can go to what's the other one? Ulta, uh, quest. I think quest is the other one. You can order your own blood panel for cheap. They're not expensive. You can go get a Dutch test to test your hormones. You don't have to wait for your doctor to order any testing. Now, I tell my clients, there are some really cool doctors out there. Mm -hmm. um, and what I would tell, if you've got one of those cool doctors who who is like, hey, what do you want to do? Order every test that your insurance will cover. That's what I tell them. Go order right. everything that my insurance will cover, please. I want, even if I don't know what the number is, order that test. Right. And there's some doctors who will do that um, and to do that. Otherwise, you can go to LabCorp and you can order your own testing and then you can take it to a holistic doctor who can translate those numbers right. for you. And then even going to support those holistic doctors mm -hmm. and, for example, like going in if you want your panels for your hormones, like that's really important. I feel like we should be getting those panels done. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the Dutch test, yeah. like we should be getting those done, um, yeah. you know, at a young age and, to, and you don't wait till you're in menopause. <laughs> like don't wait till that. Exactly. Just, you know, put aside, I know this is asking a lot, but put aside some funds uh -huh. and because insurance is not going to cover that no. and you don't want it to cover that because, and then that means that the government has control over mm -hmm. these holistic doctors. So right. go and support these holistic doctors that are, you know, go going against what, you know, they are, you know, would have been, Mm -hmm. under if they would follow the insurance and policies, all that sort. Yeah. So go, go get those done. And then you can compare that as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, my final annoyance um, soapbox is based around sugar. Mm. Um, 
Like what kind of sugar are you talking? So if I had a family member that was diagnosed with cancer, okay, the first thing that I would tell that family member to do, and they're going to hear shouting on both sides of this, Mm -hmm. get the sugar out of your life, right? Stop the sugar, stop anything white, stop flour, stop um, white sugar, stop all of the sugar, get it out of your life because sugar feeds cancer. My biggest pet peeve, probably over everything else, are the candy dishes in cancer centers. Why is it that our physicians do not tell patients the truth? Is it because they don't believe it or do they know it and they know that they make more money with sick patients? Right. You know, it sounds really dark, but it's, it's the truth. Cancer patients that I've known that have gone like have gone through chemo or maybe on the pill, like our dad is on mm-hmm. this pill that he can't get off of now. But it's it's one of those things where they after chemotherapy, they lose a lot of like their taste, smell, mm-hmm. all these these things. And so and the next thing you see is I, I see these people that I know personally drinking cans of Coca-Cola or mm-hmm. that is just pure like you're feeding the things. <laughs> Why are you doing this? And they say it's mm-hmm. the only thing they can taste, mm-hmm. which is really sad. It um, is sad. Yeah. And it it breaks my heart. But, you know, if you want to prevent any uh, further growth or you want that chemo treatment to work, would you not like clean up mm-hmm. how you were consume, consuming food before? Like right. that's just my questions. Like I, I want to know what the mindset is behind giving these patients the sugar. Yeah. I don't <laughs> Do they really not know? You know, right. Dr. Barry said that, you know, he was he was a physician that apologized to his patients um, because of of him not knowing any better. And he was wrong. And and he he said, you know, that doctors are not educated on nutrition. Mm-hmm. But to me, the sugar feeding cancer thing, because they th- that's how they diagnose cancer with sugar, with glucose, you know. The, the cancer ha- cells have 10 extra receptacle cells that scoop up sugar like a, a sponge. So to glow. me, that's not an education thing. Yeah, that's that's real. So why are they not telling their patients stop the sugar? Is it because right. their patients won't do it? Is it because of, you know, that they, that's the only thing they can taste? Is it out of compassion? Is it out of keeping them on chemo? Right. therapy is it be do they want them better i don't know these are the things that i think about things right. that keep me up at night why would and a the, doctor not tell their patient and and the fact is is that you know we are you're not like if you don't have cancer you still have cancer cells mm-hmm. ready to be cancer cells inside mm-hmm. of you everybody does yeah um, I'm not sure if that was the case way, way back in the day, or if it was just something that mutated in us. I don't know. That's a, that's a question I have. Like, mm-hmm. have we always had cancer cells readily available for it to to flare up mm-hmm. and become cancer cancerous? Um, so you're not out of the picture if you know if you think that you're like, oh, it's not nobody in my family's had cancer. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not. You're not just you know sliding out of there. You are possibly if you continue eating the way you are and feeding them possibly a going to be a cancer patient someday i yeah. don't know but why are we careful. not talking about it and why you know i went to i went to google that answer because i'm like it was making me mad Th- these things keep me up at night <laughs> um because we have we have clients who we love dearly and, and are yes. struggling and so i went to googling this one time cancer and sugar there were people on there defending sugar defending and saying, oh, these people don't know what they're talking about. And I'm like, but I've, I've seen it. Like I've seen the PET scans. I've seen what they do. I don't understand. I don't understand. And to me, I just feel like a bow that wraps up this entire conversation is honesty. Yeah. Can we not just have honesty? I mean, I don't even know if that exists nowadays. Eh, Not with the, not with the big, big pocketed money people. Yeah. When you get money involved. They like it. Is it even possible to be honest? Because I feel like our people deserve honesty. They mm-hmm. deserve to know the truth without any slant, without any, you know, po- pocket picking, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they deserve to know. They deserve to know the honest truth, yeah. the, whether it hurts or not. 
if somebody told me, didn't want to tell me, you know, if I had the chance to save my life, if I had cancer and I had a chance to save my life and all I had to do was give up sugar and nobody told me about that, why, I, I would have to die needlessly. Why right. can we not know the truth? And that has happened. Yeah. You know, people have died when they probably shouldn't have died because of the simple answer. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. So we want to encourage our listeners, empower yourself. Mm -hmm. Empower yourself, even if you stand alone, even if you look like you're wearing a tinfoil hat. You know what? That's okay. Tinfoil hats are becoming very popular these days. They are. <laughs> Because we're thinking for ourselves. We're thinking what? for ourselves and we are not trusting everything that it has fed to us. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's, that's, uh, we just, you know, did a, maybe a 10th of our annoyances. Uh, we could talk about in caps like the of the stores. We could talk about four. commercials. We could talk oh, yeah. about cereal being fed to our children. We could talk about sugar in the formula. There are so many things that we could just open a can of whoop. <laughs> whoop worms <laughs> we could. did you hear me hold my breath <laughs> <laughs> your your face was probably priceless our mother listens to this podcast so we <laughs> we do not say bad words we don't say bad words we don't we Although don't i did i did before the podcast <laughs> remember that crazy, crazy stuff take your anyway. health in your own hands y'all take it in your own hands and listen if you need help um with weight loss, if you're struggling with type 2 diabetes, if you are struggling with constantly being on a diet, if you're struggling with just hitting bottom, if you're ready to dig yourself out and if you if you need help, please know that that is what we do for a living. We walk with men and women through the pit. We walk them through the pit to freedom. And that's what we do. 40 hours a week, you and I sit with people who are hurting, yeah. who are wanting to put their lives back together. I had a client reach a 70 pound loss this week. It was so amazing. Yay. And had a baby. There was another one. Had oh, a we, had a, we had a baby we had this a week. Baby. Yes. You know, that was our first. Um, now we've had keto babies. Yes, um, we because have. we have to put an official warning out because PCOS <laughs> is so reversible that suddenly babies are popping out of, you know, yeah. nowhere. But this one was planned. And I got, yeah. it was my first client that I walked through the entire pregnancy keto style with her. Mm -hmm. And we worked with the doctors on, you know, how many calories we up it. She, did amazing. Yeah, like she did. the baby weight she gained was baby. And right. it was amazing. I mean, I, I saw her picture on Facebook um, this week. I don't know if you saw it, but she's like glowing. She looks yeah. stunning. And I'm like, yeah. I did not look like that. I, I five definitely did after birth. <laughs> so congratulations <laughs> to our new keto baby. We Yay. are so happy about that. So yeah. anything else, coach? I think that's, I think we hit a lot of um, nails today we and, did. you but know, we didn't I, get very mad this, this, we did. Session. I hope they, I hope you don't think that we're angry about things. We just, you know, our annoyance is not anger. It is just something that we want people to be Powered. aware about yeah. and empowered. I love that word. And I'm going to keep using the word empowered yes. because I love the fact that we can be so empowered and controlling our own health that we don't mm -hmm. need any to depend on anybody else. Nope. And that is where we want to help our clients. We want to help empower them so that they can learn from us and then move on and live their life to the fullest. Maybe uh, like a spider web, just, you know, or like a web, just being able to yeah. spread the news and share with other people that you don't have to live this way in misery. No, no the words that somebody said one time to me, I felt like I had to live. I ha I'm stuck in this body and I will never be able to change mm -hmm. that to me is very sad because yeah. it, you can change. You can yeah. um, be empowering yourself yeah, to be you able can. to to not have to live the way that you are. You're not stuck in the body that you are in. No, well, no. there's a, there's there's a certain point that you're stuck in the body that you are in. <laughs> but let's just think about yeah. that. But, but you are in charge. You, and, you're and in our charge goal as coaches. And and this is where we separate ourselves from the diet companies. Is we don't want to see your we don't want to see your face back in our practice unless you're coming to coach for us. Yeah. So we want to give you the tools that you can use for the rest of your life. So we walk you through about a year of your life, and then we would never want to see you again because you've been empowered to well, we do, do this thing yourself. Don't. That's really no. hard to say. It is we hard don't. to say. We'll see you on Facebook. <laughs> we'll see you on Facebook. We'll see you thriving. 
Yeah. Uh, we want to see that, but we, we want to see your face that way, just not in yeah. the program. And that's where the other diet companies and, and it's a beautiful marketing plan. And maybe, maybe I'm doing it all wrong because those people, maybe. they have to sell their products uh, to their patients or their clients. Um, otherwise keep, yeah. they keep coming back. They, they yeah. sell, it's like a, 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 you know, rotating door. They, they have mm-hmm. to sell the products in order to keep the weight off. And we have a really bad marketing plan because we went, you don't want to see them again. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm to graduate and then come well, coach for shoot. us. So, we need to probably rethink that. No, we should. We should. Seriously. Yes. <laughs> All hey, right, guys. We, yes. I know you want to go, but should you mention anything about our upcoming challenge? Or is Yes, that- because this podcast will be played before the challenge. So, I was going to say, we might want right. to say something about October that. October 1st, we yeah. are doing another 30-day carnivore challenge. This thing changed our life. In fact... So I don't know if I should say this or even admit this out out loud, but um, I started, I'm about, I still do mostly carnivore, but I, it's garden season. And so Mm -hmm. I brought in some veggies again, gained two pounds. I'm like, I don't know. Like I literally want to know the answer and nothing has changed. All I've done is added the veggies back in Yeah, and I'm like, nothing else has changed. And I, and so there's something there. I don't know what it is, but carnivore. Um, and I don't feel good. Um, I'm really, really hurting. The tomatoes are wonderful. (laughs) (laughs) The cabbage is wonderful. Um, but I'm hurting. And so there's something to that, but we're going to teach you how to do carnivore. If you've never done it before and you want to do it with a group and you want a coaching experience, October 1st, make sure you have your ticket. Um, You can go to our website at kmhealthcoaching.org. It's right at the top um, of of our website. So you can go just get your seat October 1st for 30 days. You will have a coach and an entire group to do it with. So uh, head over to our our website, kmhealthcoaching.org. That's all. We release a new (laughs) podcast every Tuesday morning. And so we hope that this is enjoyable for you. We hope this one might have been annoying, but... Uh, yeah. We have to do an annoying once, we you do. know, once in a while, we got to put that in there. But Every if other. you were too annoyed, go back a week and go listen to Dr. Vera Tarman from yes. Food Junkies because yeah. you will really, you'll fall in love with her. She's yeah. a beautiful woman. And go just follow her. her. After you listen, yes, go, go follow, follow her. her. She's then, just the sweetest woman I've ever met. Write us a review. Tell us if there's something, mm-hmm. a topic that you want to hear. We that are why you're annoyed. I was, why no, was I... I said, tell our, told our audience, tell us why you're annoying. Oh, because we told say, you. Oh my God. <laughs> like, no, you already had well, your I chance. I thought I already had my chance to say why I was annoyed. You already had your just, chance. We want yes, to know from us. our audience. What annoys you? What annoys you? And hopefully it's not us. <laughs> not us. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. We open that door. If that's the case, then that's fine. Um, oh. But tell us what you want to hear next. And we'd love to to create a, a conversation piece about that. Yeah, so. definitely. Hey, we get to go see Dr. Barry in 23 oh, days. that's right. Is that it? Yeah. It's 23 days. 23 huh? days. We're going to go to I'm excited about conference. that. Yeah. Maybe we'll be inspired and maybe no, no more things that we need to know more about. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We love you. We will see you next Tuesday morning. Take Bye. care. Bye.